The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Those who had been fed by the five loaves followed Jesus to the other side of the lake and asked him for a sign that they should believe in him. Jesus said to them, No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Both of today's readings touch on the theme of faith and on what is involved in our coming to faith. The Gospel continues our reading from chapter 6 of John with its account of the discourse of Jesus on the bread of life. In today's reading, as in yesterday's, Jesus identifies himself as a living, life-giving bread that has come down from heaven in order to give life to the world. To be nourished by that bread, by the bread that Jesus is and offers, one must come to him. Another way of saying, one must believe in him. Faith and faith alone opens us to his gift and enables us to share in it. The kind of faith of which Jesus speaks is not something that we can achieve on our own. Although it involves our free response, it begins with God's gift. As Jesus puts it at the beginning of the reading, no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father. The image suggests a spiritual influence, an interior touching or inspiration. Sometimes as here the New Testament attributes this to God the Father. More often it relates it to the activity of the Holy Spirit. In either case, the teaching is the same. Faith is impossible without the presence of God's gift in our heart. Today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles also talks of faith, but from a different point of view. It reminds us that there are two parallel ways in which the gospel comes to us. In one, the way is from without, and the other, from within. Jesus refers to the latter when he says that no one comes to him unless drawn by the Father. The incident described in the text from Acts offers an example of the former. Like Stephen, Philip is one of the seven converts from a Hellenistic Jewish background who were appointed by the apostles to share in their ministry. Moved by the Spirit, Philip finds himself on a road leading from Jerusalem to Gaza. There he comes upon a senior official from the court of the Queen of the Ethiopians. Having gone up to the Holy City to worship in the temple, he's now in the process of returning home. When Philip approaches his chariot, he hears him reading aloud from the prophet Isaiah. The passage is from the fourth and last of the famous servant poems found in the latter part of the book. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before his shearers, he does not open his mouth. These verses, and indeed the whole poem, were related by the first Christians to the death and resurrection of Jesus. When Philip asks the official whether he understands what he's reading, he clearly is not asking whether he understands the words or even the obvious meaning of the text. He's asking about its deeper, its hidden meaning, its meaning in relation to the life and destiny of Jesus. 
The response of the official is striking. He's neither insulted by the question, nor does he claim any particular insight into the passage for himself. In a remarkably humble way, he asks, how can I understand unless someone shows me? He is someone who is willing to be taught. When Philip, starting with the text from Isaiah, shows the official how it and indeed the whole of the prophet's teaching point forward to Jesus, the official is so moved that he declares his faith in Jesus and asks to be baptized. Faith in the Christian sense is not something that is blind, nor is it merely a matter of emotion. It has an explicit content and a long history out of which it has come and to which it points. It appeals to the mind as well as to the heart. It can be thought about and unpacked in terms of its implications. It can be related to the whole range of human experience. The more successfully this is done, the more surely are we disposed to recognize and assent to its truth. To present the faith in this way is the responsibilities of preachers and teachers. As important, however, as their contribution is, it will never by itself bring anyone to faith. For that something more is needed. Here we return to the saying in today's Gospel, we can only come to Jesus, only really believe in him to the extent that we are drawn by the Father. At its deepest level, faith is the result of God's presence in us. Through the gift of his Spirit, he gradually transforms us, bringing us into tune with Jesus and his message. It is this inner gift that makes it possible for us to respond to the word that comes from preachers and teachers. It enables us to recognize in their word a truth that we have already experienced within us. This inner experience makes the difference between simply accepting something to be true and actually becoming a person of faith. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For victims of the recent violence in Sri Lanka, and for peace and justice in that country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for people who have lost or will lose their jobs in the current economic downturn and for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for a rapid containment of the outbreak of swine flu and for those who have died from it, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers, as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. 